I was confused. Because I, I was like, uh, Dr. Dre's on the radio? But then he then he got he got he, NWA, like how does how's it work? Dre was Yeah, I used to get confused. Yeah, like, Dre. How, how did how did two guys from two different coasts end up with the same name? <laughs> He's Andre Young. Right. He's Andre Brown. My Dr. Dre is Andre. Right. But when he was a kid, he was a ball boy for the Nets. And he idolized Dr. J. So when he got into hip hop, he took the doctor, yeah. Andre shortened it, Dr. Dre. Dre. Dr. Dre from the West Coast had no idea about Dr. Dre from the East Coast and vice versa. Mm. So it ended up being two They Dr. probably Dre. did the same thing. And they became yeah. cool with Dr. each other. Dr. J. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. 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 And and became, I used to be confused. Like yeah, it became cool with It's like um, when I became Ed Lover and professionally known as Ed Lover, and I was on the radio in New York, on Hot 97, I got wind of a cat in Atlanta going by the name of Chris Lover Lover. Little so Chris, I was like, Chris. there's only going to be one lover Love on the radio in the United States. F that. I'm sending this cat a cease and desist. And something told me, don't do it. He's in Atlanta. He's not in New York. I'm in New York. It ain't going to make a difference. Yes, and I didn't. And that's ludicrous. Wow. I'm so glad I didn't do that. They would hate me right now if I did that shit. Right, right. And me and Luda cool. Right. You know, yeah. Shaka, big up Shaka, we yeah. cool. Shout out to Shaka. Yeah, man. shout out to Shaka, man. Love you, bro. You know what I mean? Love you, man. Oh, yeah. And that was, you know, that was Luda. Chris Love alone. Love yeah. Wait, so, so, Ed, you said what your wildest interview was. You said what your favorite interview was. What's the worst? Some, One that, some, some the French worst? group they forced on us. They was, I don't remember <laughs> the name of them. Black group? ass niggas. Yeah, I can't remember their name. They were terrible. And they forced us to play their video, and it was like, <laughs> I don't even remember. They were some French dudes. They could hardly spoke English. Me Two and Dre, dark skin guys? Uh, me and Dre just straight curved them the whole interview, man. Oh, yeah. It was just yeah. like short answers just to get rid of them. I think it came from up top, and it was like, that's when they started getting too involved in what we were doing. Mm. They took the power away from us to play whatever we wanted to play. It went to Miss Sherry Howell over there. She was programming our show. It was like, okay, now y'all got to interview these guys. But this is after you're being paid all this money. Yeah, it was that we was hot. Right. We was on six days a week. Yeah. We had a countdown show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I think Saturday they played us twice. You became the tastemakers. Yeah. It was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and twice on Saturday. So where, where do you think, somebody who's experienced it, where do you think this corporate need comes from to put their hands in something that's already working to the point where they fuck it up? Money. They got to get the money. You can't get the money. Yeah. They got to get the money, bro. You're not, when it is, it's on a corporate platform, corporate is going to always know that they're going to get the money. We started realizing that there was money. We did this shit for love. We didn't do it for money. I was never in this for money. Right. Mm -hmm. I was in it for the love. I just wanted to be involved. Mm -hmm. Like, this is the music that I grew up on. Like, this, these people are the people that I idolize. Like, Mm -hmm. uh, Russell Simmons is from my neighborhood, not too far. Chad Master J was four blocks away from Hollis. where I grew up in. Nah, you, you right? Queens guys was cheating. Yeah. You had you too know, many LL rappers from just in the hood. Right? Bar, tribe Called Quest is from <laughs> Linden. Like right there. You had to, you had to almost so get shot to go see Jay-Z and Biggie. Yeah, right. <laughs> Eric B is from like over there in... Well, he claims Long Island. Uh, well, Flushing too. But remember, he used to be, used to be Molly Maul's roommate. Right, right, true. Right, you know, right, right, so right, right. we was, you grew up around Sweet Tea was from right there. Mm -hmm. Joski Love used to come around all the time. Kwame. Kwame is from right there. So you got a taste of an underdog borough blowing up at the same time. So once it became about money, once they saw how money could be made off hip hop, it changed the whole culture. Because if you look at them old Yo MTV Rats video, hardly ever did do sneakers match whatever outfit they had on. Yeah, they yeah. wore what the fuck they had. They lost soul. That's how they dressed. Right. That's what they wore. They didn't do wardrobe budgets and all that shit. We couldn't afford Dapper Dan. Drug dealers wore Dapper Dan. Yeah. No, we couldn't afford that shit. Yeah. Couldn't afford that. I wanted a Suzuki sidekick so bad. I didn't know what I would do. <laughs> that shit was the car when I was coming up. <laughs> Suzuki sidekick. Yeah. Master Ace made a whole culture around him. Yeah. Jeeps. That, the Jeeps was crazy. The Wranglers and you take it to Dapper and he. Louis Vuitton the shit out of it. That was the shit. You know, you saw, we saw Fat Cat and the Corley brothers and the Furtado brothers and the Prime team. Mm -hmm. They drank 
fucking that, split that some more wet at the club. We drink yeah. $8 Alabama Slammers or whatever you had. <laughs> So we were just about the culture, man. We weren't about the money. Then when, when money came, it was different. Wouldn't it be smarter to leave the cats who are making the money the fuck alone as opposed to meddling and putting your hands in and insisting that this French group comes and you got to interview them? Like, wouldn't they just leave y'all? It just seems nah. it, it seems smarter. Am I bugging? Or nah, no, it does seem smart, that. but it ain't smart to put the power in the hands of black kids. Yeah. Even if they're the ones making the money. Don't you mean, cut off your nose to spite your face. Absolutely. Wow. Okay. Wow. Absolutely. Make the money because I'm going to make more money, three or four times as much money as I'm paying you. You think that still stands to this day? Absolutely. Absolutely. Corporate America makes way more money off hip hop than the artists do. Yeah. And the artists now make a lot of money. money. God yeah. bless them. Right. God bless them. A small percentage. But it's still a small percentage of what the corporate, what corporate America makes. It's still just a tiny percentage of what they make off of them. No matter what they right. give them, they're always going to make five to ten times more money than you. And the same thing with sports. Mm -hmm. If you can pay LeBron that, what are you making? Facts. Right. Yeah. Facts. What, what is he generating? Yeah. If you get somebody, a, you get Zion Williamson a $200 million contract and he hardly plays, what are you making off of just his name? Alone. Right. Because they make the money off the jersey sales. They make the money off of all of that. The concessions. Tickets. All of that. Tickets. Behind. All of that. Yeah. Right. right. Small ass shots they be giving at the arenas. Absolutely. <laughs> Thirty dollars. Thirty dollars should be what nothing. And they water that shit down. It'd be a sniff. Matter of fact, speaking of the shots, let me give another one. Speaking of the shots, we keep talking about it. <laughs> Make is this the is this five minute break? Now again, rewinding back. Um, yeah. You 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 protect them Pac from himself. But when he came to New York and um, you know, heard so many stories from across the room in here on how Biggie and Pac was close, they was cool, they was friends, they was that. How did all of that go wrong, in your opinion? Quad? The quad shooting, it changed everything. It changed the, the scope of their friendship. It just, it, it changed everything. And then Pac was going through his shit with the sexual assault case. It, it just changed everything. Cause I met Pac, when I went to do my little blinking, if you miss me part in Juice, that's when I met Tupac. And I had Stretch with me. I had never been like a big weed smoker, but him and Stretch hit it off brilliantly. Right. And they became friends and everybody knew Big and Big was on the come up. Pac wasn't really that big yet. Like Juice came out in 93, right? Mm. Pac wasn't really that big. He already had an album out. He had already did the digital underground shit, but he wasn't the huge star that he became. Right. So everybody that was on the come up at the same time became friends. The quad shit shifted everything. It fucked everything up. We lost two good niggas because of some bullshit. Straight you, bullshit. You feel like it was big, bullshit. Everybody knew it was bullshit. When you say we lost two, Big and Pop, you feel like that was connected. The East to Coast West Coast War. Yeah, yeah, it kicked off over. It kicked off, and it really wasn't that. <laughs> it was really Suge and Puff that that had a problem. But I heard even they were friends at first. It was yeah. really Suge. If you from the journalist, it kicked the shit off. It, that was it. When Suge stood there. Me and Dre hosted that Sauce Awards too. 95. Yeah, yeah, yeah 95. Yeah. When Shook said, if you don't want you all up in the video, all up in the, all up, dancing. come to death row, dancing, right. that really kind of started it. All right, but it, was it like a joke? You know how them all, I'm like, no, 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 no that no, Sauce Awards, niggas no. was mad. Niggas want to form on them niggas. But Snoop got out there like, y'all don't love us. We know we're in New York. Y'all don't love death row. Snoop never was in that shit. Right. He never, Matter of fact, him and Pac had problems because Snoop was on the radio where Angie was like, I'll do a record with Big. I love Big. I love Pac. Snoop was neutral. Snoop didn't want to yeah. be in that shit, man. Yeah. He said, them boys don't want no problems. They, and he didn't say it in a mean way. He was like, them boys ain't looking for no problems. Either. No. It was a that bunch of bullshit, bro. Man. That got out of hand and the media had a lot to do with it. They created the East Coast, West Coast shit to sell magazines. Mm. And it just got out of hand. You know, ain't nobody going to back down. But what, what were the conversations like with Tupac at the time? Fuck them niggas over there. That's what the conversation was like. All right, from your perspective, would you feel res your friend is responsible for your protection on his turf? No. 
Not when you know where it came from. And I'm not privy to say where it came from, but he knew where it came from. And it had absolutely nothing to do with Big. Nothing. What? Nothing. From what I understand, when he got upstairs and they took his gun from him, Big hit it in the piano. And then when all the cops came, Big walked back in, got the gun out of the piano, put it in his waist and walked out amongst all of them cops with an illegal handgun. It just wasn't what it's supposed to be. And it got blown the fuck out. It just got blown, man. But was it blown out because Pac was motivated to, to kind of push that narrative? I don't know what he was motivated by. I can't really speak on it because I don't know. I know that was my dude. I know these both my dudes. Right. I know Pac used to come to my mama's house. I know my mother used to feed the nigga. I know he was with Stretch all the time. I know when he came to New York, Stretch pick him up in the MPV from the airport and he hung around. It's just, I don't know how that shit got blown out of proportion. But I know I wasn't going to be in the middle of this shit. Right. I knew that. I knew I was Sweden, nigga, Switzerland. I'm neutral. I'm not getting involved in that shit. And I saw both of them. I was sitting next to Big when the lights came on in the Peter, Peterson Automotive Museum. Big reached between his legs and gave me a bottle of Dom P. And said, drink health this shit and bring it back. I'm like, I'm to drink it. Give it to some bitches, nigga. I'm going to fuck. So I got a Polaroid of all of us. I got a Polaroid picture of all of us together. Mm -hmm. It's me, Big Puff, Stevie J, Jermaine Dupree, Big Gene, all of us together in the Polaroid. It took several Polaroids. Big was on the cane because he had had a mm -hmm. car accident with the yeah, right? Yeah. 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 So he gave me the bottle. I took the bottle. I started pouring it around. The party was lit. New York was in the house. It was fucking crazy. Everybody's yelling, show me the money. Jerry Maguire was out. Ace is DJing. Me and Kenny Burns on the mic. It's just so New York up in that mm. motherfucker. It was crazy. <laughs> so I bring the bottle back. He looked at it. You drunk half this shit? And he reached between his legs and pulled out a bottle of Grand Marnier and filled it up and gave it back to me. So mm. the, they shut it down. The lights come on. I start walking. He's like, Edwin. I'm like, what's up, Christopher? You going to Nas's party in the hills? I'm like, yeah, you want to ride with us? I said, nah, I'm good. I got a call. Because every time I went to L.A., I, I was feeling myself. Nigga making some money. I'm giving me a Corvette drop top. It's fucking L.A. Why right. not? Mm -hmm. right. So I'm chilling. I got a call. That's the last time I saw him. So I get the call when I'm at the party. Somebody's blowing me up 911. I ain't have no cell phone. And I call him back and say, come to Mount Sinai. Big guy shot. That's the last time I saw him alive. What, did you get to see him in the hospital? No, not at all. Nobody was let into there. Everybody was like out in the uh, emergency area where the trucks come in. Everybody's out there. Everybody's out there. Seize comes out and he kicks a garbage can. He started yelling and we knew Big was dead. That shit was just like quiet, descended. And the hurtful thing to me was how LA reacted to it. When you got up the next day and turned on the radio and they was talking about it, like the poetess was on and she was talking about it, and they were so disrespectful, man. He shouldn't have been his fat ass out here in the first place. He knew what it was. It's war. This is how we get down. I was like, wow. But why? Because that's how they felt. They had Pox back. Did you ever run into those people later on? And be like, the people that were calling wrong. in? Nah. No, no, not the people that was calling in, but like the, I heard the radio stations was kind of propagating. No, poetess. Bullshit. I heard poetess. She definitely wasn't. She was opening up the line for people to say how they felt. And there was a oh, lot of people. She wasn't saying that people no, were calling in. No, it was the people that was calling gotcha, in. Gotcha, the majority gotcha. of the people. Mm -hmm. She was like, rest in peace, Big. Big was an incredible artist. The people that was calling in, we opened up the lines. Y'all want to say something? They was being so crazy, oh. mad, disrespectful. Super contrary to where we was at on the radio here when Pac died. Right. When Pac died, everybody felt fucked up. Yeah. I heard Angie announce it. I was on my way to the Nas concert. There's a video that floating around of me telling everybody yeah. at the Nas concert yeah. that Nas told me, and I can't say that. You go out there and say it. That pocket died and that night. Yeah. And we felt fucked up. Nobody was like, well, that's what the nigga get. Yeah, yeah. Nah. Nobody was doing no, that. No, nobody was doing that. The pocket died before me. Mm -hmm. but, but during that time, nobody felt like Biggie or Puff or Bad Boy was responsible for Pac's death. Nobody in the East Coast. But they felt that way in the West Coast. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think Big is dead right now because people felt like Big was responsible for Pac. And he definitely wasn't. If you watch the fucking uh, Biggie and Tupac shit that the whole series, I forgot what they did on it. 
Mm-hmm. It, you already know. It's you right there. The fight in Vegas. Yeah, it was. that's what that was about. They had nothing to do with it. But people felt like that because everybody was so <clears throat> up in arms. Like, you know, you scared to go to L.A. My mom's like, get on the first thing. Come home the fuck out of there because you're scared. We're right. We went back to that hotel and I had Biggie died. Yeah, we were that, scared. I heard the, the stories. I heard the stories. It was death. like, yo, people thought Suge was killing everybody. Yeah, we thought this we was nice. Crazy. We don't want to go to get nothing to eat. Like, everybody's trying to change their flights to go home. Mm. You in LA. Fuck whether or not you're in Beverly Hills, you still in LA. You're on their territory. Mm. So we scared to death, man. I'm like, I ain't the fuck out of here. As quick as I can. Hoodie on, pull tight on my way to the airport. I ain't want nobody to see me. I'm scared. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The, the, the publications that were uh, promoting the East versus West thing, being that you had the power, you were on the radio at the time, you were, did you ever speak up Absolutely. against that? From my perspective of being friends with both of them, yeah. I, but nobody was trying to hear it. The West mm-hmm. Coast wasn't trying to hear what the fuck I had to say. They weren't hearing it. I remember those. Sh- I remember some of those shows. Yeah, I tried to. You tell spoke them. out against it a lot. I spoke out against it all the time because it got. It became a snowball. It snowballed out of everyone's control. I'm quite sure if everybody could go back and do it differently, that a lot of people that was involved in it would have done it differently. But it just snowballed to the point of no return. It just snowballed, and they ran into each other, and then they beefing, and then this person got this crew with them, and this person got. That crew with them, and ain't nobody backing down because ain't nobody scared. This shit was crazy. The the word was, and I, the word was that when Pac was blaming Biggie for the shooting, Big was genuinely hurt. Oh, the destroyed. Idea. This fucking destroyed. Like yo. it really yeah, hurt. You can see the interviews. He did interviews. It's like I don't have no malice or nothing against that man because they were cool. Pac mm-hmm. used to always want to go to Brooklyn. The fuck mm-hmm. with Big and season them. Mm-hmm. He always wanted to go over there. And Big always wanted to find out where Pac was. The fuck with Pac. They fucked with each other. Mm-hmm. They rhymed with each other. They did a lot of shit with each other. You know, um, if you hear Fat Joe tell a story about when they was on stage at Madison Square Garden, I got seven Mac 11s yeah, about it. Yeah. yeah, he was right there. They came to that show together. Hmm. Mm-hmm. There was no beef between them two niggas. They came to that show together. They were friends, man. Mm-hmm. They were friends. I was, I'm older than them niggas, so I was always a voice of reasoning. You know what I mean? Like, yo, come on, man. What y'all niggas doing, man? Chill out. Pop, school, fuck with that person over there. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I know these niggas. So me being a voice of reasoning, <clears throat> it hurt It hurt big to his core. It did. To hear that he was being blamed. Yeah, it, it hurt him. It hurt him bad. It hurt him bad. What do you think the science was behind that? Knowing that Pac knew he wasn't. I don't know, bro. Because he stopped fucking with Stretch before Stretch died. And he was Stretch's daughter, Manisha's godfather, and I'm the other godfather. Oh, he wow. stopped fucking with Stretch because he felt like he wanted Stretch to take sides. And Stretch was like, nah, I fuck with you. I fuck with Big. I'm not taking no sides. Even though I produce records for you, I'm not, I'm not getting involved with that shit, yo. Come on. What are we doing here? Right. It was, it was just a... Ridiculously mixed up time, man, in hip hop. And it's a fucking shame, man. It hurts me. Because I often think of like, what would hip hop be like if both of them niggas had lived? Something different. A lot yeah. of rappers were totally right different. Right. Something yeah. different. Something yeah. different. Yeah, a lot of niggas wouldn't have made it, bro. Ew. Something different. Big was so good. He was. Yeah. He was so good. And it, he was so lyrical, and right? It's, it's, and Pac. Just had a way of capturing your heart and making niggas feel it, your soul, and mm-hmm. getting you into into your feelings. And the nigga was an amazing actor. Mm-hmm. So if he'd have lived, he'd have probably been bigger than Will Smith or Latifah or any of the rest of them. He was that fucking good. This hot for trap trapper turned smack rapper. Only smack rapper that you know is smack rappers. Got bars I can hang with the backpackers. Trap star, I don't hang with the backpackers. I'm in the hood with the work you heard. Making fiends leave earth you heard. Got your baby mama thirst you heard. Feel the flow, nigga, throw it in reverse. This the way you need to surf you heard.